In this lecture, we will review psychosocial development in infants and toddlers. We will focus in the areas of emotions, temperament, and attachment. Psychosocial development occurs as children form relationships, interact with each other, and understand and manage their feelings. In emotional and social development, forming healthy attachments is very important and is the major social milestone in infancy. Attachment is a long-standing connection or bond with others. Developmental psychologists are interested in how infants reach this milestone. They may ask questions such as, how do parent and infant attachment bonds form? How does neglect affect these bonds? And what accounts for children's attachment differences? To begin, let us review some key terms. Emotions, subjective reactions to experience that are associated with physiological and behavioral changes. Temperament, characteristic disposition or style of approaching and reacting to situations. Temperament, reciprocal enduring tie between two people, especially between infant and caregiver, each of whom contributes to the quality of the relationship. Now, in regards to emotional development and attachment. At birth, infants exhibit two emotional responses, attraction and withdrawal. They show attraction to pleasant situations that bring comfort, stimulation, and pleasure. And they withdraw from unpleasant stimulation, such as bitter flavors or physical discomfort. At around two months, infants exhibit social engagement in the form of social smiling as they respond with smiles to those who engage their positive attention. Pleasure is expressed as laughter at three to five months of age and displeasure becomes more specific to fear, sadness, or anger usually triggered by frustration, between ages six and eight months old. Where anger is a healthy response to frustration, sadness, which appears in the first months as well, usually indicates withdrawal. As reviewed, Infants progress from reactive pain and pleasure to complex patterns of socio-emotional awareness, which is a transition from basic instincts to learned responses. Fear is not always focused on things and events. It can also involve social responses and relationships. The fear is often associated with the presence of strangers or the departure of significant others, known respectively as stranger weariness and separation anxiety, which appear sometime between 6 and 15 months old. And there is even some indication that infants may experience jealousy as young as 6 months of age. Now, stranger weariness actually indicates that brain development and increased cognitive abilities have taken place. As an infant's memory develops, they are able to separate the people that they know from the people that they do not know. The same cognitive advances allows infants to respond positively to familiar people and recognize those that are not familiar. Separation anxiety also indicates cognitive advances and is universal across cultures. Due to the infant's increased cognitive skills, they are able to ask reasonable questions like, where is my caregiver going? 
Why are they leaving? Or will they come back? Separation anxiety usually begins around seven to eight months and peaks around 14 months, and then it decreases. Both stranger weariness and separation anxiety represent important social progress because they not only reflect cognitive advances, but also grow in social and emotional bonds between infants and their caregivers. Now, caregiving matters in terms of infant emotional and psychosocial development. Around eight months, infants look to their caregivers and others to understand the world, which is sometimes called social referencing. When introduced to a new toy or stranger, infants read the emotional cues from others about whether to engage or avoid. You've probably noticed this in children. If they fall down, they look up at adults' expressions to see if they're okay. If a caregiver smiles and says, you're fine, the child probably continues on. But if a caregiver looks frightened and grasped, the child begins to cry. Now, emotional regulation can be defined as how and when emotions are expressed. Through infancy, children rely heavily on their caregivers for emotional regulation. This reliance is labeled co-regulation as parents and children both modify their reactions to the other based on the cues from the other. Caregivers use strategies such as distraction and sensory input like rocking or stroking to regulate infants' emotions. Despite their reliance on caregivers to change the intensity or duration and frequency of emotions, infants are capable of engaging in self-regulation strategies as young as four months old. At this age, infants intentionally avert their gaze from overstimulating stimuli. By 12 months, Infants use their mobility in walking and crawling to intentionally approach or withdraw from stimuli. Now, throughout toddlerhood, caregivers remain important for the emotional development and socialization of their children. Now, let's move on to the topic of temperament. Perhaps you have spent time with a number of infants. How are they alike, you might ask yourself, or how are they different? How do you compare with your siblings or other children you have known well? You may have noticed that some seem to be in a better mood than others and that some are more sensitive to noise or more easily distracted than others. These differences may be attributed to temperament. Temperament is the innate characteristics of the infant, including mood, activity level, and emotional reactivity noticeable soon after birth. In a landmark study in 1956, Chess and Thomas evaluated 141 children's temperament based on parental interviews. Referenced to the New York Longitudinal Study, infants were assessed on nine dimensions of temperament, including activity level, adaptability to situations, intensity of reactions, threshold of responsiveness, how intense a stimulus has been and how the child reacts to it, quality of mood, distractibility, attention span, and persistence. Based on the infant's behavioral profile, they were categorized into three general types of temperament. You have the easy child, which was about 40%, who is able to quickly adapt to routine and new situations. They remain calm. They're easy to soothe and usually is in a positive mood. 
Then you had the difficult child, which was about 10%, who reacts negatively to new situations, has trouble adapting to routine, is usually negative in mood, and cries frequently. And then we have the slow to warm up child, which is about 15%. They have a low activity level, adjusts slowly to new situations, and is often in a negative mood. Now, temperament does not change dramatically as we grow up, but we may learn how to work around and manage our temperamental qualities. Temperament may be one of the things about us that stays the same throughout development. In contrast, personality defined as an individual's consistent pattern of feeling, thinking, and behaving is a result of the continuous interplay between biological disposition and experience. Personality also develops from temperament in other ways. As children mature biologically, temperamental characteristics emerge and change over time. A newborn is not capable of much self-control, but as brain-based capacities for self-control advance, temperamental changes in self-regulation become more apparent. For example, a newborn who cries frequently does not necessarily have a grumpy personality. Over time, with sufficient parental support and an increased sense of security, the child might be less likely to cry. In addition, personality is made up of many other features besides temperament. Children's developing self-concept their motivations to achieve or to socialize, their values and goals, their coping styles, their sense of responsibility and consciousness, and many other qualities are encompassed into personality. These qualities are influenced by biological predispositions, but even more by the child's experiences with others particularly in close relationships that guide the growth of individual characteristics. Indeed, personality development begins with the biological foundations of temperament, but becomes increasingly elaborated, extended, and refined over time. The newborn that parents gazed upon becomes an adult with a personality of depth and nuance. Now, to reiterate, let us review the key terms of this lecture. Emotions are subjective reactions to experience that are associated with physiological and behavioral changes. Temperament is characteristic disposition or style of approaching and reacting to situations. And attachment is reciprocal, enduring tie between two people, especially between infant and caregiver, each of whom contributes to the quality of the relationship.